Hey Google, it's Gord. It's a Wednesday, it's almost noon, and I'm starting my wake and bake. Yeah, I woke up, I uh, watched a couple of movies first. Something to do. Excuse me, did not wake up in that much pain today, but it's my luck. <clears throat> it's my last day of uh, medicating before getting my son this weekend because I have to take two days off medication before even picking them up because we all know how long pot stays in your system. Yeah, that's me rolling my eyes over the stupidity of the of the restrictions that I'm under and my ex-wife refuses to talk about the restrictions because she says her lawyer says this is the best thing for our child. What a ridiculous thing taking advice from a lawyer on what you should do. <laughs> Anyways, this is more about voting. I'd like to cheers first to, with a uh, lemon sativa. Uh, and this is take two because take one, I couldn't find it. And it was just hiding behind something. So here we go. I know better than to take a big one in the morning. And I uh, had a couple of big ones last night because I needed it. Cheers. Now, what I'd like to do is talk about voting. And I think I can talk about it quite well from the perspective of either American or Canadian. Because it's my feeling that your vote doesn't count. It doesn't do a single thing to you or for you or for our government. Uh, Maybe much less in the States. We do have a slightly better system where corporations have less lobbying power. But we still have a system that does zero for the main, for, for what government is supposed to do. Government is supposed to look after the people, not the corporations and let them look after the people because then it's done by greed but the government is supposed to be there for it's like the police they're there to protect and serve but you take two incidents one where a corporation is in trouble and one where a person's in trouble the police will always go to the corporation first and so will your government your government is there for the corporations they are doing secret trade deals that take away power from government and put them in the corporations. Corporate earth is becoming more powerful than any government because they can, through TPP, TIPP, and all the TPT, all these different trade deals that are being negotiated with supposedly for us, but behind our backs with no voting is taking away their own power and they know it. They know it. But they don't tell us that. So they're giving away their power. And then we have an election come up and some people say to me, you're not voting, then you can't say anything. And while I cheers to that, uh, I, I love people who have the vibrance that their vote means something to them because they haven't studied enough to know that their vote really doesn't mean anything. Let me get a little bit of flour here. Um, we'll start with chocolate fondue since that's in my hand. Uh, they're vibrant. They want to vote. They want their vote to mean something. And I like that. And when I say don't vote, I'm not trying to take away that vibrance, that, that love of our country. What I'm trying to do is speak about reality. We have to change the system to make our votes count. The more we contribute by taking part in the system where our votes mean almost nothing. Maybe if we could get a couple million of us together to vote the exact same way all the time, then maybe somebody will listen. But 
even when 65% of Canadians are in favor of at least decriminalizing marijuana, we still don't have, we have the liberals only talking about decriminalization and the conservatives talking about taking it away totally. Um, that goes to show that they aren't working for you. They're working for the corporations. They also, at the same time, while saying that they're not going to build the economy, the medical marijuana economy, secretly behind the scenes, they are making deals to make these Canadian companies that grow marijuana and cultivate marijuana strong and powerful. That's not what the marijuana community needs. It's not what medicine needs is more, but we knew it would happen as government grab. So back to the voting. How does voting for anybody in any of your constituencies change anything towards you? I made the example in... Uh, in a post just recently, cheers, chocolate fondue, of in my own riding, Deepak O'Brien has been the conservative leader in our riding for 20 years or so. Uh, certainly for all the time I've lived here, and I've lived here since 2000 in this house, he has done zero for this community. Zero. But he's the conservative candidate. He gets enough money for, through donations, for making sure that he gets voted back in every time. Even though he always has some kind of opposition, it's never strong opposition. We have a finance minister not a finance minister, a health minister who knows zero about health. We have a system that is broken, and people wonder why I won't take part in it. If I hate disco, I won't go to a disco and put money into the disco generation because then I'm contributing. I stand for what I what I believe. And to bring it down to brass tacks, a couple hundred years ago, even here in Canada, we 150 years ago, we would send a representative by horse to Ottawa to represent us in the federal district. That guy would have to be in touch or or lady have to be in touch with this local area and speak for us in Ottawa. That was back in telegraph days, train days, and very few vehicles and horses. And We are now in a world where Big Brother can uh, run, start the voting at the beginning of a one-hour show and by the end of it have more votes and a decision then took place in most of the voting of all the states put together. So you think about that. Not one person has come forward and said, let's strip down our government and start anew. With today's technology, we should be able to vote on every single issue that comes across the plate and then proper majorities and tertiary voting. You know, people should have a, an original sense of what they want. Every morning, wake up, do their government work. Every one of us should have half an hour where we have to go through emails and see what's to vote on today, What what is important, read about it. But because of tertiary voting, because of leveled voting, tertiary is three, <laughs> wrong word. Um, you have your original vote, and then the government, which would be an application, not people, would 
consolidate all the information from all the votes and all and everything and then develop a report to go back to the people in a day or two or 10 or 20 whatever it is go back to the people for a further vote understanding now how the rest of the country has voted so that they could look deeper into the issue and find out okay it, some people are voting no I voted yes why did they vote no that kind of thing it can it can be done it can be done and it I won't say I won't vote if there were a candidate in my riding or a party in Canada who was saying let's kill the government in the current form Let's make it tiny, tiny, tiny and make it an application. I'll vote for him. It's got to be somebody brave enough to vote, to say vote for me so I can get rid of my job. Then I'll vote for you. Prior to that, I will still continue to be a person who does not contribute in the current system because the current system is broken. My vote is a waste of the day of voting day. And I won't waste my days on government when the government won't spend their days on me. Peace. Think about it. Stuff to think about.